Hi everyone, welcome back to another educational session with the customer education team. This time we're gonna cover mapping and diagramming in Miro. Um, so we're gonna focus on some tips and tricks to make you successful with architecting a map or diagram in Miro and also show you some brand new features uh, never before seen until today. So let's get started. Uh, while you are getting settled, getting your beverage and getting ready, if you could please just drop down in the chat and share your answer to our icebreaker below. What's your favorite ice cream or slush flavor? I would love your recommendations. My personal favorite, of course, is always chocolate or caramel or something super sweet with a little bit of salt. I think that that's the best. Now let's get into it. My name is Jennifer Clark and I'm a customer education manager here at Miro. I've had the lucky privilege of being an adult educator for the last 10 years and I'm just really excited to bring you some fresh hot off the press content today um, about mapping and diagramming inside Miro. Um, of course, you can follow along on any of our social channels. If you'd like to see more Miro tips or communication from our brand, uh, we'd love to connect with you. All right. So let's talk about what we're going to cover today uh, and map to like, what should you expect to learn at the end of today's session? We're gonna cover how you can use Miro to author both maps and diagrams. We're gonna cover exactly how to bring those to life in your space. We'll also talk about how Miro could enhance the effectiveness of your work. So I'm gonna show you a few tricks to make the work come forward even more efficiently or quickly, um, no matter what kind of diagram you're trying to make in Miro. We're also going to show you where you should focus your attention in the tool. There are a lot of features and applications and uses for everything in Miro, but we're just gonna focus you in on the most important ones to master as you become proficient with mapping and diagramming inside the tool. And we'll also point you in the direction of where to learn more um, in case you'd like to continue your learning journey um, and then go on from there. All right, great. Let's cover just right at the top what exactly is Miro, especially if you're new to the tool? Uh, it's an online collaborative whiteboarding platform. So it's online in that you can access it from any device, be it your desktop, your laptop, your smartphone or tablet device, and you can bring it up on an app that you download to that device or open up a tab in your browser of choice. It's also collaborative. So not only can I sit down and create content in Miro and then share it with other people, I can also bring other people into the board with me and we can co-create some content together. And we'll show you a little sneak peek of what that looks like in today's session. It's also a platform. So uh, you can use it for whiteboarding purposes. Anything you would expect to be able to do on a physical or digital whiteboard, you're gonna be able to do in this platform. And it's gonna work as a nice part of your tool ecosystem. So connecting with your document storage, uh, maybe where you store your spreadsheets, connecting to other apps um, to make your workflows more efficient. Uh, Miro already integrates with hundreds of different options. I encourage you to check out our marketplace to explore some of those and we'll cover one or two uh, in today's session. So now that we've covered the basics, I'm just gonna use my screen down below and I'm gonna take you through a bit of a story um, and take you through uh, the life of Maria, who's a business analyst for a contact center. Um, she wants to use Miro to do everything for an upcoming project. And I'm gonna take you through kind of every stage that she's gonna go through when she's preparing to create a new process flow in Miro. So we're gonna go um, all along a bunch of different steps to kind of narrate what that's like and see the world through her eyes and see what she learns about Miro as she goes along. So we're gonna follow this map right here that you see. Um, we're gonna start with a project kickoff explain how you can use templates to map to, for example, dependencies or risks or explore how other people will interact in your project together. We'll also talk about how you can use Miro as your one-stop shop for information. So bringing all of these different resources in so that you can pull in data or notes as you're creating a diagram in the moment. We'll also get into some diagramming. I'll show you how to make one live with a few of our new features. 
We'll also talk about how you can get feedback on your work or how Maria is going to get feedback on her work all the way down to presenting it uh, in kind of a final or ready to go state um, as she shares that work with everyone. So you would probably follow all of these steps um, when you are you know, kind of getting started with a project in Miro from start to finish. And we're gonna look at it through the eyes of Maria's work with that contact center and see, see what happens for her, see what comes to life for her. Okay, great. So the first thing that Maria is thinking through um, is that she'll need a lot of different things to make this project a success. And the first is a really good kickoff. Um, so we'll want to create a project board. We'll want to get a template down to get us organized and make sure that we outline the scope of work so that we don't have that unfortunate scope creep um, as she's working on a process flow uh, to, to map something new. So for Maria, I've actually got a little bit of a template set up. I'm going to leave presentation mode really quickly so you can see. Um, I've got this really cool project canvas that I pulled from the template library. Uh, to find that, you just go to the object menu, left-hand side. Looks like these little squares and rectangles joined together. It says templates. And you can explore um, any of the templates you want, some of them specifically for mapping and diagramming. But since we're at the kickoff stage, I just really like this uh, project canvas, project canvas right here. And this is the one I selected. You can always click preview on any template to get a kind of quick look at what it will look like. And even if it's not exactly what you want, you can always bring a template into Miro and then customize it for your own purposes. And if you're on one of our paid plans, you'll be able to save that as a custom template to your own library. All right, cool. So I've got a template right here just on my board. And let me orient you really briefly to everything that Maria's got going on here. So she's got this template and in each section, she's defining, for example, what's the purpose and what's the scope, any milestones, results, et cetera. So in this particular project, Maria's working with the contact center. They've just recently brought a new team online onto their floor. So they've got a new billing team to handle all billing and invoice related questions. And so when it comes to the phone system, when customers are calling in, they need to be included now in that call flow. So Maria has been tasked with you know, architecting a new call flow, uh, and she's gonna need to pull in a lot of information to make that successful and work well um, with the existing business. So right here, I can just go up to the top and I see that my project lead, Maria, has got her you know, kind of project ready to go. She's adding the billing team to that call flow. So we already know that our purpose is to scope in the new billing team to our like customer call flow. Perfect. So then she can go on and kind of fill out other, you know, kind of sticky notes here to define things. So uh, for example, one of the things that she's going to need to define is who's on her team, who's going to work with her on this project. And I already know I'm going to get Giovanni to come in and give me some feedback a little bit later. So I'm going to go ahead and put her name down. And we've also got uh, Charlotte, another person on the team who provided us with some materials that I'll show you in just a moment. I'll go ahead and put her name down here as well. Now, uh, for example, we'll go over here to this section and we notice that the result is that we want the billing team to receive all questions related to invoices and payments. So now, now Maria has got this kind of North Star for her diagram. She knows the purpose. She knows the business goal that we're trying to achieve. So it's nice to use Miro for a purpose like this before you start authoring your diagram to really align on why exactly am I doing it and what goal am I trying to achieve. So that canvas really helped her define that better and get it all, get it all on the board. Okay, great. So once you've outlined your project, you use your template of choice. Now you've got something to refer back to anytime uh, you want to get going. Okay. So then let's take a look at our next section. Maria's going to want to upload and bring in a bunch of different materials to support her in this project work. Um, she's going to need access to reference material. So for example, she knows she's using um, Amazon Connect or Amazon Web Services uh, as the technical tool um, that the phone system kind of sits on. So she'll want to review that documentation and have it at the ready so she knows what's possible and not possible with the software. She'll also want to have access to the current process, maybe to outline what am I changing and what's staying the same. And she'll also want access to, you know, just contacts and different people so she knows who to get in touch with if she has questions about the diagram that she's creating today. So you can actually bring in any kind of material into Miro um, and use your upload button to bring in different materials. And so I want to show you what Maria's already placed on the board. 
and kind of orient you to how to make that happen for yourself. So as I mentioned, she's using Amazon Connect um, in their contact center. And so she went online and she found a document kind of outlining um, all of the different kind of components, uh, the documentation that she's going to need to reference. And she just copy and pasted the link right here on the board. When you copy and paste a link into Miro, it'll generate a really nice thumbnail so it's easy to get back to and you can connect it to other objects on the board. So she knows that if she clicks on that button and then goes to the source, she'll be able to open that up, open that up in a browser tab. The other thing that she wanted to include was, for example, the kind of strategy or business case about why she's creating a diagram today. And so the operations team created that presentation in a deck format. She was able to upload that directly into Miro. And I think that that's really handy to do. So to upload content like that to Miro, you'll go to the object menu on the left hand side, the upward facing arrow inside that square. You're able to bring in content from any of these different devices. So for example, I could upload a file from my local device, I could bring it in from a website, um, or I could access one of these cloud-based storage solutions. And I just used Google Drive uh, to make that possible here. Um, so Maria clicked open Google Drive, she selected that presentation, and check this out. She's got it right here, right in the center. And when she clicks on that presentation, she's able to actually flip through the different pages and kind of browse and refresh herself on the information that she needs um, about, you know, kind of what goal are we trying to achieve? What are the requirements that were set forth by the business? They're all centered here in her presentation. So if she ever needs to cross reference something or open it back up again and refresh her memory, she's got it all in one place on the Miro board. She doesn't have to go hunting through her files to get it. So that's a really cool tip. Something I would encourage you try um, if you're architecting your next diagramming project in Miro. Now the next thing she's going to do, and this is probably the most important, is that she wants to examine the current process, think about the new goal we're trying to achieve, and then use our diagramming tools to make changes uh, to that process flow. So she had a hand um, from someone in her own contact center, Charlotte, who put together the current process flow and some helpful context so that she can you know, get access to that later. And it's all in this spreadsheet. You can actually upload spreadsheets Again, uh, directly from Miro, you can just click Upload and select it wherever it is. And if it's a Google Sheet, you can actually edit it in real time on the Miro board itself. But she just wants to, you know, kind of double click and open it up. And you can see the spreadsheet right here. So, you know, uh, uh, Charlotte was really kind to kind of outline all of the steps, share who the agents were on the team, and, uh, you know, a little bit more information about their hours of operation. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and take this list of all the steps and I'm going to copy it to my clipboard. And maybe you knew this trick or, or didn't know this trick, but you can actually copy cells from a spreadsheet and when you paste them into Miro, and I'll kind of zoom out to show you, they will enter the board as sticky notes. So I'll zoom in a little bit and show you. We've got all of the steps um, from that spreadsheet that were mapped over here as sticky notes. And now Maria can take advantage of the kind of infinite canvas and using this as her kind of play space to move these sticky notes around and orient them into the new process and delete any unnecessary steps. This is a lot easier to map using sticky notes that are super flexible and you can move them around, change their color, etc. So I'm going to take actually those groups of sticky notes and I'm going to zoom over here to another part of the board where I am going to architect my diagram. So one of the first steps that Maria is going to take is she's going to look pretty closely at this current process. And she knows that at the moment, uh, the current process is that all billing questions are going to a manager call line. The manager performs the process, and if one isn't available, the customer has to leave a voicemail. Probably not the optimal customer experience, and it's really great news that we're bringing on a whole team to support those questions. So Maria's gonna take a look, and I think probably the first thing she'll wanna do is delete anything that's no longer going to be relevant in her new process. Um, so if we don't have managers calling back anymore, we can just delete anything that relates to the manager because they're no longer a part of this new process. Um, you know, an agent doesn't have to transfer that call anymore because it's just gonna go straight to that team. So they can delete that too. Um, we can just kind of remove again everything there. Okay, so now we've already got a way simpler process and Maria's life is a lot easier. Um, so let's see, some things are probably missing though from this outline. Maybe we want to take advantage of this moment 
to better optimize what the customer is going to hear when they first call the helpline. So we'll keep this one, of course, and then, you know, maybe the first thing that they're going to do is they're going to hear now some prompts. So maybe they'll hear a greeting and hear some prompts so that they can use that IVR technology and get to the next section, right? So anytime you hear that, you know, press one to get to that team, press two to get to this team, Maria is kind of thinking about that and organizing that on her board. Okay. So then, you know, they're going to hear the greeting, they'll hear the prompts. And then really the customer has got two choices. You know, either they'll be connected to a team that doesn't relate to billing or they do. And so Maria can start to see those branches kind of coming off from there. You know, they won't have to verify the customer. They'll be able to verify those issues. Okay, so Maria's got the proper inspiration. She's gonna use this little space over here to architect her first diagram. She's gonna move these a little closer. And so that way she'll have like a point of reference for her new process. Now I'm really excited to show you some of the new features we have in Miro that are launching um, around uh, new mapping and diagramming capabilities. And the first things first that really is gonna make Maria's life a lot easier is that she has a lot more shapes to choose from in these new diagrams. So let's head to the shape tool and I'll show you what I mean. So we're gonna go to the object menu, left-hand side, looking at that little square right there that says shape. Okay, we've seen this one before, probably. You've seen all of these basic shapes. But now when we click all shapes, we're actually taken to a much broader menu. And as I scroll down, you can see that I've got some options. Um, so to configure and customize the options that you wanna use, just go to those little settings right there in the upper right-hand corner. And you can see that now we have shapes and kind of elements for different kinds of mapping and diagramming, including BPMN, data flow, and flow charts. We can also use connectors as well. So I can toggle all of these on if I want, or I can just kind of edit this and keep it exactly to what sort of diagram I'm gonna do in Miro. And so for Maria's purposes, she wants to use those flowchart shapes and she can you know, kind of see them, see them in, the, in the menu on the left in just a moment. So she'll just kind of unselect anything she's not gonna use and just keep selected the ones that she will. Okay, great. So she can see the basic shapes. And as we scroll down, now we've got some flowchart shapes. Cool. So once she's got her menu configured just the way she wants it, she can start diagramming. So of course, we're gonna wanna start with our starting point, that terminator. And the nice thing is, as I click and move around the board, resize, you know, and get the text where I want it, that menu is gonna stay docked on the left-hand side so that I can observe and kind of reference and bring new shapes in as I want. So she's gonna follow the process where she'll get all of her shapes down, we'll color code, and then we'll connect at the very end. Okay, great. So she's gonna start here, and remember our first step was to call the helpline. That was her first move. That's the first move in our process. So then remember, we had kind of uh, talked about here, we're gonna have some new directions that are gonna happen for the customer when they call that helpline. So to get you know, a, you know, a part of the process onto the board, we're gonna click that rectangle just like so. We'll size it the way we want it. Increase the size of that text so we can see it really easily and then we'll rename. So their customer is going to hear the greeting and then we know we wanna add, for example, Maria knows that the next step in the process is gonna be in that square shape. We know we wanna add the same exact dimensions and same text size. So you can do that a couple of different ways and I think probably the easiest is just to hit Command D on your keyboard, Command D. That'll make it really fast for her to just say here greeting and then she can edit right here and it'll say uh, here options. So, you know, we're kind of off to the races now. So once the customer hears some options, and we'll just kind of move some things to the side here, they're gonna reach a decision point um, in that moment. And so we'll go ahead and bring that diamond over for a decision. We'll resize it one more time, and we'll increase the size of the text. So they're going to like choose path. That's what the customer is gonna do. They're gonna choose their path. And really at that point, they can go one of two ways. They could go to uh, a non-billing team, we'll call them the account team, or they can go pursue the billing team, right? So we'll zoom in even further. All right, so I'll go ahead and get two more squares. You know what, actually I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this one so that it's all the same size and it looks really nice. So connect to account team, or we can connect to the billing team. That's our choices. Okay, great. So then of course we assume that the billing team is gonna resolve that issue. So we'll just type that in there. 
Okay, and then once that's done, we figured that that's going to be the end of our process. So we'll get another terminator down there and we'll pop it down on the bottom. And I can show you how to make room in just a moment. We're just editing right now. We'll call that the end. Okay, so now Maria can zoom out a little bit. She's got the bigger picture. And she's like, oh, you know, things are a little scrunched over here, or I want to kind of spread this out a little bit. You can totally do that in Miro. So I'll go ahead and hide my shape tool real quick, my little diagramming tool. I'm going to hit shift, click, drag on my keyboard, shift, click, drag. And I'm just going to drift it up a little bit, center it into view. We'll move this little terminator right here and this one right here. So now we've got a lot of space to work with. Okay. So the next step that we would recommend that you do is, you know, when you're doing this diagramming process, um, even if you're really, you know, kind of early in your career and you're starting to diagram um, really early on when you're learning all of these tools, the nice thing is that um, you've got all of this laid out and you can change the colors um, on any of these shapes to indicate and maybe make it a little easier on the eyes um, so that you have both the structure of the shape and the color of the shape that's indicating our process flow. So we know that our start and end, we want them to be the same color. We want them to be bright and really stand out. So I'm going to select that, uh, you know, kind of oval right there. And then I'll hit shift on my keyboard and click this oval. And as you notice, the only two shapes that are selected on my screen are that top oval and that bottom oval. So now we can customize them both at the same time. I can go in here to my um, fill color and I can change it to this really bright yellow so that it's like very obvious and we can definitely see the start and the end point. So that's really, really cool. Um, and then let's go ahead and check and see, we probably want like a different tone for these other colors. And so I'm gonna go ahead and get hit shift on my keyboard again and just click the shapes that I want and then I'll select a color for them as well. And uh, you know, maybe it's this really nice kind of like lapis color. Yeah, I like that. And we'll even make that a little, a little less bright, okay? So then uh, for this shape right here, our decision or inflection point in the process, we'll want that to be the same tone as the blue, but maybe a little more opaque or maybe a little less so that it'll really stand out uh, between them. Okay, great. So now I've got my process flow. Maria's like really, really off to the races here. She's got that process flow ready to go. We're looking at it now. And if we like the way it looks and we like all the colors and we think it's kind of ready to go to share with someone and get their feedback, we can start using our line tool to connect them all at once. Now this is kind of the magic part and I'm really excited to show you this new feature. Um, so if you've used our diagramming tool before, uh, you're totally familiar with, you know, dragging and dropping from one dot, one blue dot to the next to connect two shapes. But check this out, if I hover, Kind of hard to see at the second at the moment because of that context menu we'll zoom in even further but if i hover over that blue dot do you see now that a light blue dotted line starts to appear from my starting point to my end point and if i just click it will automatically connect which i just think saves so much time so check this out i'm just going to connect and connect and that makes it so easy to start going and start connecting all of these lines Okay, but now we're at like a different point, right? We need to connect this shape to these two bottom shapes. And so let me show you a quick way to do that. We can click on our little diamond right here, a little decision point. And if I click that, click my mouse, you know, it automatically connects to this shape. But I also want to connect this square on the right um, up here too. So one quick way I could do that is I could click on this, this particular object right here. And as you notice, if I click on this blue dot, it will nicely connect right at that kind of point, that, that intersecting point with those other shapes. So I just click right there. Okay, but now the arrows aren't facing the right way, so I need to make that quick edit, that's okay. You can totally switch the arrows and make them also bi-directional if you'd like. So I'll just click on that uh, line right there, and then over here in our menu, you can control what the line start and the line end are, or you can just flip it. That's my favorite trick. Just being able to flip that arrow back and forth. Okay, with one click, we got ourselves organized. So it's like totally in the right place. Okay, cool. So now let's keep going. I'm gonna draw that line there and it's facing the wrong way, but that's okay. Again, we can flip it and so it's good to go. And then we will end with our Terminator.
but you know, let's, let's kind of bring this over actually, because I want, you know, like this, this connecting to the account team also needs to end as well. So let's make this a little neater and a little nicer and you can totally make those changes, uh, just like so. And you can also kind of change where that, uh, bend in the line will be, uh, to make it a little bit neater, a little bit nicer. And we can always play around with the look if we'd like. So now I want to also connect, um, this line, for example, over here. And so now they match up nicely all in one spot. Okay, great. So now we've got our full diagram. It's looking really good. Maria's feeling really proud of herself, really happy. And now we've got, you know, some, uh, some options to show. One more quick thing I wanted to show you is let's see, you notice that, I mean, a couple of these shapes are a little too close together and we kind of want to make that a little bit more even. And maybe if I squint really hard, I could fix it. But the nice thing is Miro will give you some guidance about if the shapes are equally separated and apart from each other. So as I click on this shape and I drag it to the right to kind of put it between the two other shapes, some little space guides will appear. You'll see them right there, those little space guides right there. It lets me know that the shapes are in line with each other and they're equidistant. So when I release, it looks a lot neater and nicer. Now, if it's your preference to map using the grid in Miro, you can totally do that. Uh, but when I share it with someone else, maybe I don't want that grid to appear, or maybe I just prefer using a dot grid to map. You can actually change that too in Miro. Just go to the settings in the upper right hand corner and just go down to background grid. And you'll be able to select no grid if maybe you just want to share this with someone. You don't want the grid to distract them or use a dot grid if that's your preference. Um, if you like to map on a dot grid instead. But since I'm about ready to share this, I'm going to go ahead and go back and remove the grid entirely. So that way, when someone's giving feedback, they just see the clean presentation like that. Okay, great. So let's talk about what feedback could look like in this, uh, in this diagram. So one thing Maria is going to want to do, um, is to lock down this diagram so that when she gives some feet, when she wants to get some feedback, she doesn't have someone accidentally making a mistake and disturbing the content that she's just created. So to do that really quickly, again, we're going to hit shift, click, drag, shift, click, drag, selects everything in view. And I'm going to click on this little padlock that appears right above. Just click that lock and it'll lock it. And if you'd like to really protect your work, click that little shield button. That means that no one but you can unlock that diagram. So Maria is going to choose that option so that when she gets some feedback, she doesn't see anything disturbed underneath. Okay, great. So one more thing you might want to do when you are sharing uh, a diagram with someone in Miro and you'd like for them to give feedback is to actually direct your stakeholders to perhaps the most current diagram or the part of the diagram that you'd personally like them to view first. So if you've never set a start view in Miro before, you might really appreciate how easy that makes things. So what I do here to achieve that is go to the settings in the upper right hand corner, just to the right of the blue share button. And I'm going to slip on down to set start view and Miro kind of automatically wants to snap to where your cursor is and how far you're zoomed in, but you can move this window around anywhere you like and center someone on the exact part of the board you'd like them to enter on. So it'll save your teammates time when they're going to give you feedback. You're going to pop them right to the spot that you want. Okay. And then one last thing, when you are sharing diagrams with others, we know that you don't want them uh, to maybe accidentally disturb some of the work you've created, or you don't want them to accidentally like delete a resource or something important on the board. That's totally fine. Um, so you go up to the blue share button and depending on what type of account you have, you can control everyone's level of access to the board. So for example, I could invite someone directly from email, but a thing I really like to do is to share the link with them by, you know, kind of going anyone with a link and limit them to just comment only access. And that way I'm assured I've locked my diagram and it ensures that no one's going to disturb any of the other content I have on the board. So that's really handy too. So Maria can make those controls here as well when she's architecting her diagram and getting some feedback. Okay, great. So now we've talked about safeguarding your work, really protecting and locking things down. And oh, check that out. We've already got some feedback on our diagram. Let's see what's up. Okay. So let's click on this first comment and see what it says. So Giovanni is saying, what are the options again? We should list them. Oh, that's such a good point, right? 
Um, what are the options that the customer is going to hear when they call the phone and, and hear, you know, that lovely voice, you know, talking about what they need. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to unlock my diagram because, you know, now we're editing it again. Joe left that comment in that yellow tone right there. We can go in and leave a comment. So, for example, we go to the object menu, look for that little chat bubble with the lines in there, and we can leave a comment to say, okay, um, the customer would hear for billing, select one. For all other account issues, select two. So maybe that's the menu that they're going to hear when they dial the phone. So I can leave that comment. Maria could leave that comment. And, you know, we can also select a different color to distinguish between our stakeholder feedback and our own comments on the diagram. So maybe all of our stakeholders are leaving comments in yellow and Maria wants her comments to stand out. They'll be in red. So it's really clear which one's which. Okay, great. Let's go see that other comment and see what it says. Just click it open right here. Can we include the chat team in this flow? Oh, it sounds like Giovanni wants to increase our scope a little bit, work in the chat team into this flow. But we know that that's not part of scope, so we can just let her know that. We can say, thanks for the feedback, Joe. Um, that's outside of scope at the moment, but I'll make a note. So we can actually create a little parking lot in Miro, let her know what we're doing. I'll just zoom out a little bit and show you that a really nice thing that you could try is to add, for example, a Kanban board to the to your board. You could find that in the three dots at the bottom of the object menu. Click open that application. We'll add it to the board. We can also delete any of these columns that we like. We can just delete that column right there and maybe delete that column right there. So now we've got one to work with and we can call this our parking lot. So any of the other items we may want to later add to our backlog or just mention that, you know, our stakeholders were inquiring about that. Maybe I'll say uh, in that card, um, someone wants to um, include chat team in new billing flow. So we'll see maybe what that looks like. And as maybe people add more feedback, they'd like to include other things. Maria won't necessarily take it on in the moment, but can note it in Miro to like rest assured she won't forget about it and her stakeholders feel heard throughout that process. So that's something that you can try as well. Okay, great. So now that Maria's got some feedback, uh, she's gonna make some changes. The last thing we wanna show you is how to bring it all together. So Maria knows that she's gonna need to present this new call flow back to the operations team and get their additional feedback and say, okay, when are we gonna get ready to implement this? Um, so she can go ahead and do that by dropping a few frames into Miro to make a really nice, crisp presentation and get it ready to go. So to do that, I'm just going to click on the frame button right here in the object menu. You can also hit F on your keyboard to do that. And I like the custom frame. It makes it really easy uh, to get something going. That one is a little bit big and a little bit oblong. It was just the same shape as that last one. We'll make it a little bit more presentation looking. Okay, great. So Maria can come in here and then, for example, call this her introduction. Okay. And then we can get another, another frame on the board hitting just Command D. It'll make an exact duplicate of the same dimensions of that frame. And we'll call this the new call flow where she can show people what she's got. Okay, perfect. And then she can have another frame for questions. Cool. So the nice thing about Miro is that if you want to build a presentation on this space, you don't have to do it in order. You can create content in any order you'd like. Uh, and then you can organize it and then reorganize it as you want to iterate and make changes. So we know that Maria is definitely going to want to include this new call flow, this new process flow in that space. So check this out. I'm going to hit shift, click, drag one more time, and I'm going to grab everything in view. I'm going to hit command D on my keyboard, and I made an exact copy. I will drop it onto that frame. I'll kind of zoom in over here, and I'll just take that white dot in the corner and resize. Okay, great. So now we've got that whole call flow in the middle of our presentation so that she can orient people to it um, when she's presenting it later. And so to enhance any presentation in Miro, I think two tricks are going to make that really easy for you to create with uh, some speed and some polish here. Just use that capital T text box to add maybe a bit of a title. You can, you know, change and customize this text any way you want. We've got a lot of different fonts and colors that you might try. Uh, we'll call this the new billing team process. 
Um, and, you know, Maria wants to kind of jazz this up a little bit. That second tip I was going to show you is to use a tool that we've got actually in the app uh, where we integrate with Unsplash to bring in those high quality open source photographs uh, to really enhance your presentation. So we'll go to Unsplash and maybe she wants to pull up a nice picture of a phone for the call flow, you know, something kind of charming uh, to get it going. So I'll just drop that image onto the board and check this out. I can move that text box out of the way and I'll make this into my background for something really slick. Okay, cool. So you see that that picture is a touch bigger than our frame. That's totally fine. I can just resize just like so, just by double clicking on that picture and pulling on the white squares to change it. I'll pull this, oh, it went behind it, that's okay. If you want to push something to the front in Miro to make it lay on top of an image, you just click on that, go to the three dots on the right hand side, select bring to front, and you're good to go. So we will put that on top, maybe resize a little bit so that everyone can see. Cool. So now we are in business, we're looking really good. So already, like Maria's off to the races and it's only gonna take her another second to you know, kind of put a little maybe space over here for questions. So maybe she wants to get this like ready to go. Um, I would recommend that if you're going to take in input in a live meeting, especially about a diagram you've created, um, if other people, for example, are not going to access the mural board with you, or if they are, you can bring in uh, a little sticky note template. So I'm just going to go to templates on the left hand side in the object menu, head over to building blocks, and I'm going to use that template called stickies pack right there. I'll make them extra large, just like so. Okay, now everyone has a sticky note that they can grab, maybe place on the board, add their notes, etc. Okay, so now let's zoom out and we can see that Maria's got a really cute presentation. She's going to be able to show it to her colleagues and get more feedback and get more input. And uh, she's done the whole project from start to finish all within Miro. All right, so I'm about ready to wrap up, and so I just wanted to show everybody a couple of resources to continue the learning fun and your learning journey. Um, you should totally head to our Miro Academy to learn a little bit more about the features, tips, and tricks that our teams put together to help you inside the tool. Um, we've got great content about getting started if you're super new to the tool, and more like you know live webinars and academy courses around other use cases too. We also have a great help center that's got documentation about all of the features in Miro and troubleshooting any issues you might have, as well as information about all of our applications and marketplace, uh, everything in our marketplace that you may wanna use um, for that purpose. Uh, you can also connect with our community, which I sincerely hope you do as a community conference here for Distributed. We would love to connect with you about your experience using these new features. Um, and what you've learned from today's session. So please share um, in our community or in the chat uh, today. And of course, our Miroverse is a really great place that you should go to if you'd like to explore some pre-made templates made by our community itself. Um, it's a really fantastic place where you can get inspiration for icebreakers, uh, for team building exercises, for strategy and planning sessions. And there's a lot of mapping and diagramming resources there too, uh, including some templates around some maybe popular use cases like system diagrams and process flows that you might wanna check out. Okay, great. And with that, I just wanted to say, thank you all so much for joining us today. I had a blast taking you through Maria's story and talking about how you might use Miro from start to finish when using mapping and diagramming in your own role and in with your own team. Uh, we hope you enjoy the rest of the sessions today at Distributed, and we'll see you at the next one. Bye.